Hey everyone, this is Chaim Alevsky here. I'm back from Chabad of the West Side after the holidays. It's been a while and I'm going to go for a little run. And I want to just, even though it's after the high holidays and I usually wear my tefillin shirt, I just want to show off one shirt before I start my run. And this is another thing my wife designed for me. It's for, for the high holidays. Can you see it? I hope. It's a tefillin, not the tefillin shirt, but it's the Lulav and Esrog shirt. Share the love. That's really why I wanted to get on today. But actually, I'm going to move on to a powerful thought that I heard. And figure out how to turn the camera around. Okay, there we are. So, it's been... Uh, a whirlwind of holy excitement in the last month and I'm not over it yet so and I learned a few things that I'd like to share with you that uh, I hope will benefit you also I want to give credit where credit is due real quickly this is a Hasidic discourse a mimer from the Alter Rebbe the first Chabad Rebbe and I learned it actually from one of my Jewish idols, say, Rabbi Yossi Paltiel. He's got a website, insidechasidus.org. He's got thousands upon thousands of incredible teachings there. And this is a, a review of what he, how he encapsulated beautifully the Alter Rabbi's teaching about the High Holy Days. So I'd like to share that with you. And please share it on. Because there's so much about the high holidays that we experience, but not everybody really knows why and what. And I learned this this year better than I've ever done before, so I want to share it with you also and pass it on because it's actually relevant all year round. So the, the question is really, one of the questions that he answers in this mimer is what's up with all the beating ourselves up on Yom Kippur with the al Khait where we pound our chest and say, oh, I've sinned this way, I've sinned that way. And we confess and enumerate all kinds of sins uh, hundreds of times on Yom Kippur. Why are we beating ourselves up so much? That's one of the questions that is clearly answered in this essay. And what to start a little earlier, talks about how all, all year round in the temple, in the holy temple, they brought sacrifices which were consumed by a fire, fire that came from above. People had to bring their own fire and then a miraculous heavenly fire came down also. That was the service of the, of the year. And moving on, on Sukkos, there's a special service that happened only during the seven days of Sukkot, or the eight days. And that was called the Simchas Beis HaShoeva, where they would draw water and bring water to those sacrifices to the temple. So, so far we have fire throughout the year, and we have water on Sukkot. Now, moving on, the next wow. holiday after Sukkot, or the end of Sukkot, is Shemini Atzeret. It's the eighth day we're on the eighth day, the Torah doesn't really say what to do. It just says, Bayom HaShemini, on the eighth day, Atzeres Tihilachem. Atzeres means stop. Just stop. Not much more information other than stop or gather together and stop. So, what's happening? What is, the so Altar Rebbe says, today we don't have the temple. So what is the relevance, the personal relevance and practical relevance of the fire throughout the year, the water throughout Sukkot, and the stopping on Shemini Atzeret for us today, here and now. What's its relevance? So here, Sal Rebbe goes on and explains a beautiful thing. And here it goes. It says, fire. What is fire? Fire represents passion in our personal character, 
passion, a passion, when you want something, you have a desire for something, you're longing for something, you want it strong, that's a passion. When do you have a passion? When is there a fire? Only when you don't have what you want. So fire, once you have it, passion's gone. You, don't, you have it already. It's not like it disappears, like you don't want it anymore, but the passion is not there anymore. So the fire represents wanting something, desiring something that you don't have, and then water represents achieving that goal and receiving it. So all throughout the year, we're in the, in the service of fire, where we're supposed to be longing towards God, but especially on the 10 days between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. So what happens is when, how do we create that fire is the question. How do we create that fire? Because not everybody has that fire all the time, glowing strong, that passion, the desire to God. So there, here's where the Alter Rebbe explains that when we go ahead and pound ourselves through the 10 days of Teshuvah between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, we belittle ourselves consciously, willingly, and honestly look into our relationship with God and see how, how it truly is. Am I really where I should be in my relationship with God? And most people will find some lack over there. That lack creates a vacuum. The vacuum creates an ability to fill it with desire and it transforms into that desire. When somebody realizes how far they are from some from God, then they are able to desire and want and long and yearn to be closer. Because if they think they're there, they're, they're never going to get there. But if they know that they're far away, then they have a chance of getting, getting closer. So that's the desire. Now what happens on Sukkot is after 10 days of Teshuvah, after the year service and after 10 days of Teshuvah, on Sukkot what happens is water. They draw water from the wells. Simchas Beis Shoeva. And that drawing of the water is a great, great joy. And it's also water. Water represents a calmness and achieving the goal. Water means I've already achieved the goal that I've looked for. I yearned for something, I desired it, and now I've got it. So now that we have it, and the Alter Rebbe gives an example of, for example, a child who's looking for a parent and really doesn't know where the parent is and seeking the parent. So the child is looking with a passion and is consumed by passion, by looking for the, the parent. But once the child finds the parent, the passion is gone. The, parent, the child can cuddle up in a quiet, calm cuddle. So the passion is gone. So does it mean that the child doesn't like God, like his parent anymore? No. It just means that the passion, the fire, doesn't need to be there anymore because it evolves. The relationship evolves to a different level, to a different state. I'm getting wet here. Help. Okay. So, moving on, finally, once you had the desire and then you acquired the, that which you desired, which is a relationship with God, what's the next step? That's Shemini Atzeret. Shemini Atzeret is where God says, okay, you worked hard to get it. And you know what? Sometimes we say, I got it. And now I'm getting over it. So Rabbi Paltiel's famous words, like, like they say in America, okay, you got it, now, now get over it. So our purpose now is to actually absorb and maintain and preserve and internalize that fire that we had and that relationship that we just created. That's what we want to do now. And that's what Shemini Atzeret is. Shemini Atzeret means stop, absorb, internalize, and permeate yourself with the previous experiences of the year, of the high holy days, of the fire, of the achieving, acquiring, and channel it. How do you make something permanent? By channeling it in action. And through Shemini Atzeret and Sechat Torah, we dance the nights away, and we also commit to 
channeling everything we've got, our relationship with God, into learning Torah, specifically learning Torah and fulfilling God's mitzvah. So that's our job on Shemini Etzeret and Sifas Torah, and that's where the, the whole picture fits well. Desire, fire, desire, water, acquire, achieve, and third is absorb, maintain, preserve. There's a lot more, but maybe next time we'll talk a little bit more about that. God bless you. Have a great day, great year, and enjoy and share. <laughs>